Transistors, like resistors, capacitors and diodes, are discrete components and are therefore still very important. However, electronics really took off with the invention of integrated circuits, where multiple discrete components are placed on a single semiconductor crystal known as a chip. In this section, you will find out how integrated circuits are made how they are combined to make control units, and how all these control units and the wires connecting them constitute a vehicle's electrical system. Field effect transistors are the basic components of integrated circuits. Numerous transistors and diodes are applied to a common substrate, as well as connecting elements such as connections, resistors and capacitors. Move the mouse over the semiconductor material to see the components. Click them to find out how they work. You are already familiar with this N-channel field effect transistor. The P-channel field effect transmitter has the opposite structure to the other one. It is referred to as complementary. With crossovers, one connection is sunk into the semiconductor material and acts as a P-type semiconductor underneath the connection crossing above it. The insulation consists of silicon dioxide. Connections are manufactured using the process of aluminium vapor deposition. Resistors are P-type regions in an N-type semiconductor. The doping and size of the resistor track determine the resistance. Capacitors are two conducting paths on top of each other. The top one is made of aluminium and the bottom one is a P-type semiconductor. They are separated by an insulating layer of silicon dioxide. Diodes consist of two adjacent N-type and P-type regions. A changeover switch can be constructed from just two complementary field effect transistors. This is the simplest kind of data storage element. Either one transistor or the other is turned on. Storage modules consist of many of these elements. Microprocessors, on the other hand, contain a more complex arrangement of transistors. They can perform arithmetic calculations and make logical decisions. Semiconductor production is making rapid advances. The number of transistors in each module doubles every 24 months, yet the size remains the same. Modules containing billions of transistors are currently being produced. Control units contain various semiconductor modules on a circuit board. Most of them are similarly complex to the one shown above. Click the semiconductor modules for more details. The transistors amplify the signals of the output modules as described in the previous section. These modules are application specific, which means the vehicle manufacturer orders them with precisely defined functions from the semiconductor manufacturer. The voltage regulators convert the fluctuating voltage of the vehicle's electrical system to a stable supply voltage for the modules. The interface modules allow data to be exchanged with other control units. The microprocessor is the central module in a control unit. It performs all the arithmetic calculation functions and controls the processes in the control unit. The storage module stores various information. This includes the microprocessor program, fixed data such as characteristics, and variable data such as operating conditions. External signals are sent to the input modules.
these prepare them so that they can be processed by the microprocessor. The operations calculated by the microprocessor are sent to the output modules. These convert the signals and amplify them so that various electrical components can be connected. The freewheeling diodes protect the circuits in the control unit from induced voltage. The control units often have a clearly defined range of functions. For example, the engine control unit controls processes in the engine, the air conditioning control unit controls the air conditioning system, and so on. However, the control units exchange information with each other. Here is an example. The air conditioning control unit receives the coolant temperature from the engine control unit in order for it to adjust the heating. The engine control unit receives a signal from the air conditioning control unit that the air conditioning compressor will be switched on. It then raises the engine load to prevent the speed from being reduced. In today's vehicles, the control units are not directly connected to each other, but are all connected to what are known as bus lines. Without this complex interaction, the economy, safety and comfort of today's motor vehicles would not be possible.